Hey guys, in this tutorial we're going to talk about how you can integrate videos into your 3D scene in iClone. So we're going to talk about various ways that you can, uh, various creative ways that you can use videos to kind of enhance your environment and the atmosphere of your scene. Alright, so let's talk about the various ways that you can import your video files first. Um, so let's go over to my uh, Explorer folder that I already have open to our pop video sampler. So I have a whole bunch of uh, pop videos here. Uh, we have other tutorials that explore more about pop video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to import in my uh, this video right here, this pop video right here of a handprint that it slowly appears. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and drag this into my scene. Now right clicking and dragging is the essential part here because that'll bring up an option when you import it into your scene for image layer, plane, billboard, and to your background or whatever um, object you've dragged it onto. I'm going to select plane, first of all, because plane is the simplest one. And plane will basically, if I just press play here, you can see our creepy hand will appear uh, as a video. And you can see it's a plane. I can move around it. It's just like a prop in my uh, in my scene. I can move around it uh, to various directions and stuff like that. Another cool thing we can do is we can probably uh, take this hand and we can move it. There's actually a spotlight above our character's head as well. So if we wanted to make it even creepier, um, as opposed to having this red hand appear in front of him, we can take this hand and we can rotate it. Uh, let's rotate it. Uh, I think 90 degrees would be okay. There we go. And let's bring it up over here. And you can see now that it will uh, it'll now appear over top of our character's head. And if we bring it closer to the uh, light, we probably want to resize it. So we can press the R hotkey to resize it just like this. And take it down, take it down a notch and you know, reposition it right over top of our character. Something like this. So this creepy looking hand will, uh, will appear over our character. So if we uh, press play, you can see, ooh, if this is some sort of horror scene, that would be pretty creepy if that happened. Anyways, okay, so that's how you can use planes. You can move them around, manipulate them in all sorts of fun ways. Well, let's go over to the other side of our abandoned house right here, over to this end. And what we're going to do now is we're going to import in a billboard. So to do that, I'm going to go over to the media tab right here. And this is where you can find all your videos that are included with iClone. You can also save your own videos here as well. Uh, under media and under video. And we have a number of different embedded videos. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just simply right click and drag this eyeball in and we'll move it to, and it doesn't really matter where we move it. And now we're going to select billboard. And you can barely see it, but that's going to create an eyeball that will follow us around. What I'm going to do is I'm going to illuminate this. I'm going to go to our materials here and with my diffuse channel selected, I'm going to go down here to self illumination and boom, there we have this illuminated eyeball. Okay, so we're not going to be using any conventional lighting. We're just going to be using the self-illumination from our object here. But notice that there's still a square around. If you pay close attention, you can see there's still a square around our eyeball, just like this. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to import this opacity map. This comes embedded with iClone as well. So we're going to simply click and drag this over to our opacity channel right here, and that gets rid of the background. So now we have this um, ethereal eyeball that's just kind of following us around. And you can see the, the uh, difference between a billboard and a plane is a billboard will follow your camera no matter where you go. And that's why I use this kind of creepy eye for a billboard. You can see it looks around just like that. It looks very realistic. And it just stops there. If you want to continue going, uh, looping over, because this is a loopable uh, video, you can press F3 and go into your timeline. Make sure you have object related track selected. And that the uh, billboard there, we have it selected. Let's go down to our video track, and you can see there's a, uh, where is the video? Oh, we need to go back down here to the beginning. And you can see down here, if I just scroll out a little bit, here is our uh, video file that lasts for about 180 frames. It's our video clip. And we can simply just, you know, keep on looping that over and over and over and over again onto infinity. And if we press space and playback, you can see the eye will continue to look around no matter we, where we go in our scene. So that's looking pretty creepy right there. We can keep that there. We don't need to worry about it. I just want to show you guys the potential of uh, billboards. And of course you can zoom out like anything. It's just like a prop in your scene, except it will be um, always looking at the camera. So keep that in mind. But if we bring our camera over here, we don't have to look at it anymore. Although it's still looking at us, which is kind of 
a little bit unnerving. All right, anyways, we're going to talk now about image layers. So with image layers, what you can do is you can actually add something, uh, a video, onto your screen, which will kind of be attached to your lens. Now I'm going to take a quick look at uh, our, uh, our video files right here. And in that same pop video uh, motion elements uh, sampler there, I'm going to click and drag this indie pop video file. And it's going to be done with any other video file as well onto our scene. And now I'm going to select image layer. Okay. Uh, this image layer is basically, let's expand it a little bit. Let's move it over here. And let's click and drag it all the way to the bottom of our scene here. So what this does is this basically is has created a semi-transparent um, layer that's kind of attached to our camera. Uh, you can see no matter, no matter where I move around, we have this cool looking um, video layer that's uh, attached to the, basically attached to our lens. And I think we need to expand this a little bit. It's a little area there at the bottom. And we can go over to our uh, eyeball over here as well. Where is he? There we go. Um, oh, there we go. We can do the same thing. So we can have the you know, eyeball kind of looking around just like that. It sort of adds a cool uh, atmospheric effect um, if you add the image layer on top. And like I mentioned before, it's just like a layer that's attached to the lens of your camera. So you can use that in various ways. It's recommended to use things like, uh, you know, semi-transparent where you have, uh, you know, certain areas um, that you can see through um, if you're using image layers. All right, so that's basically using image layers. The last one we're going to talk about is backgrounds. So I'm going to go to the uh, same folder here, except now I'm going to go to the root folder. And I have this cool apocalyptic background uh, that uh, I'm going to load into my scene here. Let's take our image layer first. Let's go to the scene tab here. And let's make our image layer invisible just so we can see the stuff that we're adding here. And if you want to add a video file to your background, uh, what you want to do normally is zoom out as far as you can. And you can simply just uh, click and drag your video file directly to the background. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's click and drag it to this empty sky space over here. And that's going to apply this apocalyptic video to our background. You can see we have this cool looking uh, sun in the background or flaming earth or whatever it is, uh, which looks pretty cool. This, the uh, old house is silhouetted in front of the uh, flaming planet here. We can uh, play that back and you can see the result right there, which is pretty, pretty cool. All right, so that just basically applies to your background. And if you want to return that to normal, you can press Control, Shift, and P to go into your project settings. And here you can see under 2D background, we have that video uh, displayed as the active image. I'm just going to keep that, though, because I think it looks pretty cool. Okay, so one final scenario I want to take a look at is how to create fire using a fire video and uh, using accurate lighting in your video as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, zoom in on a character here, and I'm going to go to that uh, Explorer tab. And I have a fire video uh, laid out here, fire.avi. I'm simply going to right-click and drag that onto my scene and import it in as a billboard. I'd recommend for fire videos, normally importing them as billboards uh, is your best choice because uh, if you import them as planes, it'll look kind of weird if you move the camera around. So let's go ahead and keep this, uh, keep it this way. Um, we'll scale it up a little bit, press the R hotkey and kind of scale this up a little bit, just like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off our character's flashlight for now as well, just by going over here to the power and clicking turn off. And so now we have this uh, billboard of a fire. And if I play back, you can kind of see it right there if you squint. But what I'm going to do is we're going to load in, first of all, I'm going to load in the same video into the opacity channel. Um, so we can actually make that uh, background, that black background transparent. So let's go ahead and do that into the opacity channel there. Now there's a couple things you can do to illuminate fire. Uh, the first would be to import that same fire video to your glow map. And I'll show you what happens when you do that. So you can see now we get this glowing fire and you can, uh, you know, increase or decrease the strength of that. Um, however, if you play back, you get sort of a, almost like a dreamy type of fire, uh, ethereal type of fire. Now, if that's what you wanted, um, you know, if you want, if you're in some sort of dream sequence or some sort of hazy sequence, that would fit perfectly for that sort of scenario. But uh, in this case, I want to kind of make the fire a little bit sharper. So I'm going to delete the glow channel. And we're just going to go down to self-illumination like we did with the eyeball and booster up all the way. So now we have the more uh, the sharper and more accurate fire, just like this. Now, obviously the fire is burning, but we don't have any light. So the easiest way to add light for a fire, just go over here to your content tab, into your uh, props. 
And under props, right here, under props, there should be a light tool uh, folder embedded with iClone 6. And you'll find a torch, street light, all this sort of stuff here. The Probably the most relevant light source for this would be the uh, torch, obviously. So let's click and drag in that torch. And right away you see we have a very, uh, you know, relevant sort of lighting scenario here. Um, we can move that torch wherever we want. We can probably move it behind the uh, flames right there. If you don't want to see the torch itself, you can actually make that invisible. It won't affect the light on the torch. Just go over here to the Scene tab and find your torch at the bottom. Just make it invisible. Boom. The lighting stays the same and the torch remains. So now we have this, uh, you know, fire. Uh, we probably want to uh, go down here. There's a couple particle effects that are part of the torch as well. As you can see, if I play back, there's a little weird little thing up there. Let's go ahead and delete, uh, rather deactivate the torch fire. These two particle effects, the torch fire and the small smoke. And I'll just play that back. Ah, ta-da, it's done. All right, all gone. So let's go ahead now, and what I'm going to do is we're going to change the uh, torch lighting. You can see if I play back, we don't have much flickering going on. It's just a basic steady light. And what we want to do is we want to activate that um, sort of flickering light um, situation. So we can easily do that by going to the little torch item up here and going over to this menu down here and selecting fire. And that'll kind of create, you can do like alert first just to show an example. Make sure you select this uh, um, activate button over here as well. And if we had a fire alert, it would be something like this. All right, it seems like the alpha threshold might need some work on that uh, fire as well. Let's go here to alpha threshold. There we go. That generally fixes most things like that. And uh, okay, back to the original. Uh, so we don't, obviously we don't want a, an alarm uh, fire. That's not very accurate at all. So what I want to do is we're going to go to the uh, fire one right here and play that back. Um, oops, we still had the uh, alarm one activated. Again, make sure you remember this uh, This is keyframed. So if you go back to the beginning, you have to activate it and the fire will now overwrite the alarm. So it'll actually record. And now you can see the uh, flickering, especially on the leaves over here, which is pretty accurate, but we'd probably want a longer fire video there. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so that's kind of how you can create uh, that sort of thing, that sort of effect uh, with the fire. Uh, I think we probably may want to mess around with that th alpha threshold a little bit more there. Uh, we'll just leave at that angle right there. That should do the trick. And we can take off the light threshold or alpha threshold altogether. It's fairly sensitive, that sort of thing, especially with fire videos. So let's go ahead and Give that a shot. You can see, especially on the grass over here, we get that flickering light, which is pretty accurate for a fire. But again, probably a longer fire video might have uh, done us some justice. But uh, that's kind of just what I wanted to show you there, how you can create your own fire videos. Rather not create your own fire videos, but add the light, the relevant light to your scene for your fire videos. So that's really all there is to this tutorial, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you learned a lot. Make sure you check out all of our other um, uh, video tutorials and pop video tutorials as well.